Good morning, Noata County. It is April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. And we are here today with Representative Judd Strong and Northeast District Field Rep for Farm Bureau Gage Milliman. And um, we're going to be talking about civic duty and um, I don't know, what else? Community engagement. Did you hear that voice from, <laughs> from beyond? The shadows. <laughs> okay. From behind All the right. camera. Join us. Our mission is to promote strategies and policies which ensure improved health for all citizens of Noata County. All right, we're back. Okay, so I'm going to have you all like introduce yourselves better than I did and talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, all that great stuff, and then we can get into our discussion. So, Judd, if you want to go first. Thank you, ma'am. I am Representative Judd Strom. I represent Noata, Washington, and Osage County in the Oklahoma House of Representatives. Awesome. Okay. I am uh, Gage Milliman. I'm Northeast Area Field Rep for Oklahoma Farm Bureau. Uh, but before I was in this role, I actually served and here in Nowata County as the uh, Ag and 4-H Extension Educator for almost uh, eight years right here in, it was nine. in town. I was one year in Washington County. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So it was nine altogether. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know him. So anyway. Okay. So, um, we're talking about like what our civic duty is and like just being more engaged in our community. Um, so we've kind of, we've already done a podcast over like, um, volunteering for our community. We've talked to the beautification committee. Um, so what we kind of want to go a step further. So if you guys want to start, um, what are some really easy ways for people to get involved to actually make a change, make a difference in their community? I'll, I'll just start out real quick and, uh, put a little plug here for Judd to an extent of uh, when it comes time, you know, we all have those passionate issues that uh, come up and we want to make phone calls and we want to see results. Uh, but a lot of times, if that's the first time that you're, whether it's a school board member or a county commissioner or your state representative, if it's the first time they've heard from you, more than likely it's going to take them a little bit to uh, kind of gauge who you are, what your angle is and, and what the real problem is. So my first thing I suggest is uh, to get involved early on, introduce yourself to those people, make sure they know who you are when you don't have an issue. So when those issues come up, uh, they'll know who you are and, and be able to jump right in on, on helping you with your situation. I would absolutely agree with that. I get a, I can't tell you how many calls and emails I get a week and someone calls and they're mad and they want something done right now. Well, they might've been working on this issue for months. Yeah. I've never heard of this issue, mm -hmm. and especially when you get down to the very local level or some, some group or organization yeah. that's going on, and I have no idea what's going on, so I don't know how to help you, how to fix that, how to remedy, who to go to, so it, it takes some time to, to familiarize yourself with mm -hmm. that and, and to get both sides, and that is one of the other things. I always have to go get the other side uh -huh. and kind of come to yeah. the middle and see what's right. So. Well, Judd, you're, you're here a lot. You're here in our community a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. You, you make a weekly visit here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So, and I have to say, like, you're probably one of the most accessible legislators I've ever met. I mean, yeah. you can, you can text, call, whatever, and you get right back. Um, and if you can't, you're like, hold on, let me get done with this meeting and then I'll, I'll get back with you. But, yeah. um, so that's always helpful. So I want people to know that you can, you're approachable, you're, <laughs> you're, you're personable, you're easy to talk to. So. I think, I feel like, and maybe it was because I just, I didn't know or, or see it earlier mm -hmm. on or when I was younger, but I, I think a lot of your your um, your people that are in public service or public office are a lot more like mm -hmm. that now. It's easier for me, rather than going through all of the red tape and all of the, the, the hierarchy, whatever, shoot me a text, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, send me a Facebook message, say, hey, this is going on. Yeah. Now, in that, uh, we were talking earlier, one thing that, that's always, as far as catching up or trying to figure out, there's... There are so many people that, that think that, you know, the, the president's the boss and then the, he's, mm -hmm. the governor works for him. We work for the governor. The county commissioner works for us. The mayor works for the county commissioner. And so they think they're going up the chain. Yes. When ultimately, I, I might not have anything to do with that completely separate mm -hmm. elected government that, mm -hmm. that does that. Now, with that, um, while there's no executive power in this office, I have a great phone list. Uh -huh. And... and I have a lot of good relationships with people that, that I think are, are well earned and over time. And so, so we can get things yeah. done when we yeah. work together, but that that's people working together from, right. from the bottom up. 
you know. So, so taking it to the next level from our volunteering, our beautification committee does a great job out here. So, you know, we've, we've talked about, well, we talked about earlier, like, you know, the protests at the state capitol, um, things like that. And, and I guess at, at the national level, mm -hmm. too, um, we've talked about how effective that could be and what might be a better way to do that. Can you, I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, like, about grassroots organizations. I'll how, take, how do you get involved? I'll take this opportunity yes. to plug for Gage. Yay, okay. You know, okay. Farm Bureau, and I tell people this at the Capitol, it's a grassroots organization where these, these people at the local level have come together. And what they're working on or what's important to them works its way up through that organization, which culminates in, in Gage or, mm -hmm. or Zach Schwartz at the mm -hmm. Capitol being able to talk to us. And so it's great to have those people at the local level level and and gauge is great for that because it's the same thing if i have an, an issue with um you know any of these local issues ag related issues i can yeah. get a hold of him and talk to him because he's involved in that mm -hmm. where i might not have been he is and is aware of the people and again has those yeah. contacts and can make those uh connections so what about so we obviously we have our ag grassroots organizations mm -hmm. what are some other organizations you know um of course education is a big deal here what what are some groups that people can get involved in, like local people can get involved in if they want to see change? I, I would say go out and learn your community. Um, we've talked earlier, people might see a Facebook post or an email or a news story and they just, they jump on, you know, someone needs to do something. Mm -hmm. Or they see a story from Arkansas <laughs> yeah. or yep. from Nevada and I will, I'll get a call and someone's just as mad as they can be <laughs> because this happened is happening in the schools. And you look at it and you track it down and you finally you find out this is one school in Arizona that did something that has already been stopped. Yeah. But you, they just didn't know. They didn't call know. their local people or the people that, that knew. And so, and uh, I, I think really getting involved locally mm -hmm. is, is a big thing. And I, I tell people, I said earlier, when you're looking out the window and, and thinking that there needs to be change, the best thing you can do is step outside and, and begin to make that change. And whether that be putting on a pair of work gloves and stepping out right. to do a cleanup job or to help out or going down to your school, mm -hmm. volunteering in youth organizations or volunteering in cleanup organizations or mm -hmm. because those are things that you see positive outcomes on the way home from work. Yeah. When yeah. you look out your window and see that you've improved your immediate situation in life. And so much of that you can do yourself locally. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll just add to that uh, kind of some, I work for Fort, with 14 counties here in Northeast Oklahoma, which means farmers and ranchers, community leaders, uh, mayors, people like that. Um, we know it's over here in Bartlesville, we have a, they have a chamber there that is uh, one of the best in the state and known they get uh, compliments all the time for how good a job they do. And I've attended meetings there where we've had uh, federal senators, federal congressmen, and they have big turnouts. And not every t town has that big chamber presence, but you still have a chamber. You have organizations like that that um, will have those contacts and even have chamber days at the Capitol where you can hop on a bus and, and ride along and go down and visit with your legislators. But uh, speaking from Farm Bureau point of view, we get a lot of stuff directly from our members, so it's not just me as an employee uh, that's coming up with these answers or these ideas. I run those past our our members as well, and we get a lot of questions sometimes. Like there's a big topic uh, going on at the Capitol, or it's going to go to a vote, and we haven't heard a single thing about Farm Bureau's stance on it. And when they call me, hopefully I'm doing my job well enough that it's not the first time I've heard about it, but in a lot of cases we can kind of tell you what 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 that bill is going to do. I was like, mm -hmm. it's not going to make it out of this committee. It's not going to be heard on the floor. We've been working behind the scenes. We have uh, great relationships with senators and representatives, and, and some we don't. We have good working relationships with everybody, whether we see eye to eye with them all the time or not. So there's a lot of times we know uh, kind of where those bills are going to go before they actually get out there or get voted on, but, you know, we know how the media is. They want a story and they want to hype it up. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes our own members call and say, are we doing something on this? And like, yeah, we've already worked on it and pretty sure it's going our mm -hmm. way. So there's no need to throw anybody else under the bus at this point. Mm -hmm. So what about like a PTO group or PTA group? Can they get together and go to the Capitol and talk to people? Is that one avenue people could get involved if they're just Absolutely. for an example? It's 
you know, people always ask, I've had people ask me all the time, like, I'd love to schedule a time and maybe come down and see yeah. the Capitol. Or yeah. when is it available to come? Just, the Capitol's wide open. It's your building. <laughs> right, you and pay for it. I, I tell people all the time, this isn't, this isn't my office. Yeah. This is the office. I'm the office holder for the people yeah. of District 10. This is your office. You mm-hmm. know, throw your throw your coat down, grab grab a soda. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the Capitol is a very open and public building. It's a beautiful building. Come mm-hmm. and visit it. Come, come get to know your people and we're only down there four months of the year the rest of the year i'm here yeah. and gate i know that you've heard me talk about this this year in the capitol when we got there there were 3019 bills between the house and the senate now you think to yourself how many possible more things can they make illegal right it's kind of how you look at like why is there this it's terrible we had 58 days this year when mm-hmm. we we're in session constitutionally for four months mm-hmm. We had 58 days to go over 3,019 bills. Some of these are 100-page, 200-page bills. Some of them don't do very much. But um, that four months that we're in session might not be the best time to try to come to the Capitol. I get times, hey, Uh, (laughs) do you have a spare hour? We're running 100 bills across the floor Mm -hmm. today. I can come out and say hello, you know, from at seven in the morning, I can meet you or at four in the afternoon, I can really meet you and we can sit down and have a meeting. But there are times where we'll have four or five committees that day. We'll have uh, meetings off the floor with the governor. We'll have 60, 70 bills going across the floor. You're trying to meet with, with Farm Bureau, with, with Cattlemen's, with whatever to see what effect that these bills would have. Mm-hmm. Eight months of the year, I'm right here. Mm-hmm. I'm in Nowata. I'm in Pahuska. I'm in Bartlesville. I'm in Dewey. I'm at events. Stop me. Say yeah, hello. You're everywhere. Yeah. Like, I don't have to say, you don't can't be, really. Don't say, hey, that's yeah, that guy. You can't miss an opportunity with Judd. No. He's everywhere. Come over and tell yep. me what you think. And it's the same with Gage. Definitely come tell Gage <laughs> yeah, what yeah, you yeah, think. Yep. Let yep. Me know. What about, so, what about youth? How do we get our kids involved? Because that would be the ideal thing is to get our kids mm-hmm. comfortable with this and understanding the process before, you know, whatever. What, what are some youth organizations can you think of? Um, 4-H, I mean, uh, 4-H, FFA. Obviously. Yeah, FFA. What about like student government, like Absolutely. city councils and stuff like that? Yeah. Leadership CCLA is good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, speaking of, uh, they do have the opportunity to page down at the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it seems like... Uh, Highly recommend. We, uh, when I was working in, in the extension office, we had several 4-Hers that mm-hmm. took a, advantage of that program. Uh, through Farm Bureau, we have some uh, programs coming up this summer for the older kids uh, juniors and seniors, uh, OYLA youth leadership, uh, event. And then we're doing a new youth Congress event this summer, uh, for be this year's juniors and seniors or this next year's juniors and seniors. Uh, but it's going to be kind of a mock legislative event. Uh, so they're going to be able to visit the Capitol and, and take part in that as well. And for that, uh, event, they have to be signed up by, a uh, FFA advisor or a 4-H educator. So mm-hmm. right, right through those two organizations, a uh, great opportunity to get okay. right down there to the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, Marcus, what else can you think? What the, about the like... Ghost, the ghost voice is going to change. Yes. The, <laughs> so the... one of the themes that uh, you guys have touched on a couple of times, and it made me think of this, where, uh, Judd, you had mentioned that things are kind of improving. Access is a little bit yeah. better. Uh, but... As human beings, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else, we can kind of get riled up about a situation that raises the hair on the back of our neck, and I can't Mm -hmm. stand for this. I can't believe this is a thing. Well, sometimes we get a little too reactionary, and we, whether we want to admit it or not, a lot of generations are getting a little bit more uh, immediate gratification because we have so much news. Mm -hmm. We have so much social media. We see so much stuff. It's so hard to vet that information and go, where did this source come from? Can you speak to the pros and cons of that as far as like your constituents that you guys have, that you interact with and go, hey, this sweet person has their heart in the right place. They're just very upset and angry right now. But the thing is, they're just, they just don't have the information correct. And that's not how the process works. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something to be said about patience in the system because it does take time to get bills passed. It does take time to draw up a bulletproof sound work for everybody bill and even then, it's got to you got to fight and claw. And I've been on the floor whenever they argued uh, right to work back in two thousand. Uh, what year did I graduate? Two thousand one. Two thousand one. I was there in two thousand. I was in maybe I was there in nineteen ninety nine. I graduated in two thousand one, but I think it was in there ninety nine two thousand. And I've seen mm-hmm. how it goes, 
And it's not an easy process. It's not something you go, oh, I hate this. I'm on Facebook mm -hmm. and I've seen this and it makes me angry. Yeah. So therefore, I'm going to just start attacking everybody I can because we get like that. I'm going to go at this in a two-part answer. <laughs> one of these is having worked in uh, newspaper and journalism, the Stillwater News Press, one of the things I recognized when I was working there was especially when campaign political season came around. Uh, so many people think that what they get in the media is real life when really what you're getting is if it bleeds, it reads. Um, you're getting so many of our organizations are not a public service. They are they're selling advertising. The more views they can get, the more watchers they can get, the more advertising they can sell. And so they've got to make things crazy. They've got to get you back at 6 in the morning and get you back for the 6 o'clock news. And get. Imagine, if you will, when there's a tornado spinning up in your neighborhood, everybody turns on the weather. Everybody. How do we keep that tornado spinning? Well, you got to keep people either scared or mad. Right. Yep. And that's what it does. And so we always, we read these headlines. And so that's what gets it into it. But nobody will really verify they get on like, well, I'm mad about this too. Or well, I'm scared, aren't mm -hmm. you? Well, that tornado's in Grove. You know, it's kind of settled down here. <laughs> and it's the same at the Capitol. And this is one of the things I feel like I fight against more than anything are really bad bills that have really great names. Okay. People will get, will call my office and be absolutely livid because, and, and so that I don't, I don't want to step on the toes of any legislators or particular bills, so I always use this kind of one example, and it's called a Save the Puppies bill. <laughs> because this bill doesn't exist and nobody's written this, whatever. Right. But you have this bill that comes up the Capitol, and it's called Save the Puppies bill. The Save the Puppies Act of 2022, where everyone goes, well, I love puppies. Mm -hmm. We should all vote for this Save the Puppies bill. And it was like, okay, but then you get the bill, and it's 200 pages long, but ultimately what it does is there's a litter of puppies on one side of I-40, and there's a nice pond they want to play in on the other side of I-40. So what the bill does is it shuts down I-40 for four hours every afternoon so that the puppies can go over and play mm -hmm. in that pond. And then whenever they get tired of it, they can come home. And you look at that and you go, well, that's absolutely ridiculous. Why would anybody vote for this? And, and so you vote against it. And then you get hundreds of angry emails and calls because how dare you vote against the puppies? Everybody loves puppies. And you're an ant, you're just, everyone hates you. But it's like, have you read the bill? Do you know what the mm -hmm. bill does? And I know that that's way out there. But like I say, I don't want to pick out any particular bill, and I could. But that's what you get, and that's, that's what you get even at the local level. How dare the school board do that? Mm -hmm. Or how dare the city council do that? When really maybe someone mentioned hey, is this an option? And someone says, well, not really, here's why. But the next morning you wake up to the, 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 the whatever, the news title, the, the, the no water city council is going to X yeah. or moves to do X and everybody's mad as can be. Mm -hmm. No, it, it was a question or yeah. it, it was a statement that maybe this is an option. Yeah. And that's, that's, I don't know. Is, that's it, a, is it fair to say that uh, in the newspapers, they would put that headline oh, to yeah. get your attention yeah. so you would read it and yeah. then go, oh, now I'm educated on the topic. As as I feel like now you can scroll through Facebook and it may not keep your attention long enough because there might be something more interesting, but you still read that headline mm -hmm. and you're outraged already. Yes. Or you're like, harumph, harumph, yes, that's exactly what I thought too. But you're not reading the headline and you keep going. How many times have you seen... Uh, like satire or somebody on the street asking people about something serious, uh, pretending like it was something, and this person's already mad. They've mm -hmm. never heard of it, but this interviewer is like, "What about the su the puppy bill? It doesn't exist," yeah. and they've already got an opinion on it. Oh you know? yeah, and that it's sounds like, like it an April existed. Fool's Day joke. Yeah, yeah. Right now, what's that? <laughs> sounds like an April Fool's Day joke right now. Oh yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's interesting. Just recently, I shared an article from Facebook in Messenger, and it was had an. And the reason I shared it was because of the title. It was a, a topic that I knew information about, but the title was very misleading. So I just went to share it with a few of my friends in Messenger, and it actually asked me, you were about to share an article that you did not read. Would you like <laughs> to continue? Oh, I'm like, well, brilliant. good for Facebook yeah. for mentioning yeah. that's that. That's brilliant. So like, that's a great like segue into attend those school board meetings, attend city council, mm -hmm. attend county commissioner meetings, mm -hmm. and like, what would be the next step? Like running for those positions when they're mm -hmm. open so it doesn't have to be like we're we're just talking to the members yeah. Yeah. just and and not 
I'm here because I'm mad. You yeah. need to know I'm mad. Yeah. And I'm, you know, go and ask. Yep. Go and talk to him. And like, there are so many things that come up that that someone has heard somewhere that I haven't heard yet. Mm-hmm. I'd like to know about, especially yeah. if it's going to come up later. Yeah. And uh, you like school board comes up. You mentioned something locally. You get someone that's just mad as can be at the school board, and you say, "Well, which which one? Mm-hmm. Who who said what? Well, I don't know them, but I'm <laughs> yeah. mad at them." Yeah. And it's like, "Well, did you go to the last school board meeting?" No, I don't go to that stuff, but I'm mad at them. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so easy. And, and really, if you want something to do besides just sit and watch TV, get out and get involved in your community and go to these things. You know, Make your Tuesday <laughs> yep. night the night that you go to the, the this industrial board yeah. meeting. Mm-hmm. And you might think, well, that's, that's something boring that I wouldn't be into. But they're discussing mm-hmm. rebuilding a park, and they're discussing rebuilding a... You know, beautifying a parking mm-hmm. lot or rebuilding a, something out at the lake. And, and those are the things that will absolutely change your immediate life. There again, it goes on to what's going on right outside of your window. Yep. And most people want to, I said earlier, want to get up, you know, eat breakfast, go to work, you know, drop the kids off or they go to school, pick up the kids in the evening, go fishing or do, they just want this, this life right here. And so much of that life is response to the the responsibility for it is right mm-hmm. here locally mm-hmm. being created. What you see yeah. out your window, you can change every day by yeah. yourself. And if people see you doing it, mm-hmm. there are other people out there that want to do that same thing and will help. Mm-hmm. It's one thing, the difference between like really leadership or being the boss is just go do it. Start it mm-hmm. and other people will fall yeah. in to help. Yep. What about, yeah. what about oh, sorry. Go well, I was just going to add, uh, you know, when we look at elected officials, we think they are come from long lines of elected officials or celebrities, as you will. Uh, but I think Judd's a, kind of a testament that most of them are just normal people. And uh, especially when it comes to your school board, mm-hmm. it, it's one thing to show up and listen and learn what you can and be prepared when you want to complain, but there's nothing holding you back from running for a position on those boards as well. Mm-hmm. And, or, you know, your county commissioner, your city commissioner, those types of positions, somebody's going to fill those positions. There's no reason why it can't be you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we work with Farm Bureau on all kinds of different levels. We, we work at the state capitol and on federal issues as well. And as much as, you know, we like to complain about those issues, there's some things that are never going to get voted on, but they're popular to discuss. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, our federal, our state legislators, you can see here with Judd, they're very accessible. If, if you make that effort uh, to make Mm -hmm. contact with them, but I just want to put a plug in here also that it's been mentioned we do have school board elections coming yep. up this next month. And then uh, our state election, the primary, is June 28th. And this is set up to be the largest election in Oklahoma state history, uh, the biggest, because mm-hmm. all of our congress- all of our representative seats are up, as they are every two years. Mm-hmm. So Judd mm-hmm. here will be running for re-election. If you want to see him stay in mm-hmm. office, you're going to have to show up and vote. Um, if you got somebody else you want to support, and you want to run Judd out, you need to show up and vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that primary, primary starts June 28th. Uh, anybody And anybody can uh, file and run for those positions as well. They have to file between April 13th and 15th. And that's going to be for our two, open, our two uh, Senate seats and our five congressional seats as well. And you know, we've heard all over the news of different people who have declared for those uh, the Senate seat that's been va- going to be vacated by Senator Inhofe at the end of the year. And then uh, our congressional seats, um, all five of those are up uh, for election this year. Uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, that serves the second congressional district, which is this area, has declared he's going to run for Senate. So we are going to get a new congressional uh, member, whoever that might be. Uh, but they do have April till April 13th through the 15th to, to sign up, uh, to file to run for those positions. So there will be more people that put their names in the hat. Uh, but don't think that these elections are too big for you to be involved in, and and they're not too big for you to get to know the candidates. We're actually I'm working with some. Uh, uh, I've got a meeting in Claremore next week with Farm Bureau and the uh, City Chamber, and we're going to discuss a congress a forum that we're going to have for candidates that are running for office. I think a lot of those are going to sh- pop up around the state this year. And it's going to happen pretty fast uh, between April and May. And then even when we get through those primaries, there'll probably still be some this summer. I encourage you to attend those. Come mm-hmm. with some questions. Get to know who those candidates are and be prepared to, to vote when that time comes. 
uh, nothing more powerful than than voting and being prepared. Elections need voters, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> that's how it works. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. and and two to touch on that, you know, when I got down to the Capitol, I went down there. I, I grew up in Bowering or at Hula Lake, and um, you know, right here local. And I thought when I get down to the Capitol, I took my 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 three Dillard suits I went and got, you know, and it's like, I've got to just keep my mouth shut. These people are going to find out that I'm a country boy and they're going to run me out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you get down there and, and, and all of these people in all of these offices are just regular mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And so you think, well, I can't get involved in school board or I can't get involved in city council or I can't, and maybe not run, but just be involved because I'm just whatever i'm, yep. I'm just uh, i don't want to short anybody but it's the, uh, that's not my kind of deal mm-hmm. it is all of these people that you look at there's there there's no different they're just regular people that stepped up to do something say i've got to do something mm-hmm. and did so yep. join us yeah that's awesome anyone. I, I just want to always like to throw out this fun fact when it comes to your, the importance of your vote uh back when uh, governor stitt was elected uh governor um four years ago the primary had eight Republican candidates in that primary. And as we all know, there has to be a, a majority win. If there's not, there's a runoff. Well, one of the candidates, the former mayor of Oklahoma City, Mick Cornett, almost won that primary against eight other candidates. Uh, didn't have the, the votes to get it done. Uh, the second and third place finishers were Kevin Stitt and Todd Lamb. Kevin Stitt was just 1% ahead of Todd Lamb. When the runoff came, hard not near as many people showed up to vote in the runoff as there was in the primary. And that's when Stitt, uh, governor mm-hmm. Stitt hurdled Mick Cornett and, uh, and then went on to win the, the general election and became our next governor. So, uh, at that time, uh, it, during the primary, we had several state questions that were on the ballot that people found important. They showed up to vote for those voted for governor. When it went into a runoff, they didn't come back to vote in the runoff. So every election is important and, you know, whether you, you like the governor or not, you definitely had an opportunity to have a say in that when that time came, and you're going to have an opportunity this year as well. Yep. All right. Well, is there anything so like, before we go, is there anything like if we were to shut the camera off right now and we should be like, ah, oh, I forgot to say something. Is there anything like that? Oh, hey, while we're here, when we're in Noah, I want to put a yeah. plug in for your what the NOAA beautification teams do. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you talk about that here quite a bit. I mean, you're right here, but I've, I've been in Oklahoma City and people have said, hey, aren't you up there? Like, we drove through there the other day and they they were from, I guess, like Jay area, you know, yeah. but coming through this area, going to the tall grass, they made it a point to come here just to see the murals and the things they're doing. And driving around town, I still, and I, I come through here once or twice a week, mm-hmm. just I come through and make my stops and visit and do and but that i'm still finding things uh-huh. you know yep. that it's like hey I, what's that back there and mm-hmm. i just i think that is a great deal and i mean it's volunteer it's it is community involvement it is beautifying it's giving someone it's giving people a reason and this is one of the most important things especially for retired people and whatnot a reason to get up in the morning put your pants on mm-hmm. and go do something and make yeah. things better and so I just I want to put a plug in that and say yeah. that really publicly that I just think it's a, an incredible deal. And I'm doing great so work. happy to have those people doing that yeah. for sure. It's like it's a town pride. They're they are resurrecting that town pride that we've been we've been working for. There are 17 towns in District 10, mm-hmm. and I think that's just a model for what we could do awesome. everywhere. Perfect. Perfect. I think at the end of the day, it's easier to just keep scrolling and have your feelings like oh that's amazing or oh that's terrible Mm -hmm. but change takes effort and patience and that's hard whenever our lifestyles are i gotta get up go get to work gotta have enough coffee to get me through because i gotta take the kids to the ball game afterwards Mm -hmm. then i gotta go to this meeting i i just don't need anything else to add to my plate the only people that can even attend this meeting or whatever there's always an excuse to not go on a diet but mm-hmm. if you want to lose the weight, you got to make some changes. You got to make some commitments, and you're a community member. And if you really do care that much, not to be not to be uh, aggressive with this, but put your money where your mouth is. Mm-hmm. Make the time. You you want the change? We got to do it. Nothing comes for free. We're we're a rural agricultural town. We know what hard work is, and sometimes we just need to put that mm-hmm. hard work in a different outlet, which may be attending a meeting and just being a, a body in that chair. Because if 
if you are a board or something and you're sitting there with no audience, mm-hmm. uh, where's the accountability? There's the uh, that's what media exists for. Mm-hmm. You know, media has has its downfalls, obviously, but it also keeps people in check and go, mm-hmm. hey, we need to make sure that this message gets out the way it's supposed to get out and it doesn't look horrible, just like the puppy bill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, so, but uh, like you say, when people sit and watch that, they look and they say, those people mm-hmm. made a bad decision or those people did what I wouldn't have done. But there's really no such thing as those people amongst a community. It's all of us. Right. Mm-hmm. We, the people we allowed to do that. You know, if you're not going to go take part, it's hard to, it's hard to, I guess, throw stones. Or you and really I think you guys have made a great case. To. It is hard, but it's doable. Absolutely. And once you get yourself up and decide, I'm going to go out and work, mm-hmm. it's not that bad. It's just getting that first step. So if we're going long, but it's a great conversation. Yeah. So. Is there any suggestion or advice on a first step? Uh, uh, again, when you're looking out your window and you think things need to change, step outside and make a change. Mm-hmm. One of the small. things we've seen in the COVID deal, which has been just a huge debacle, but when everyone went home, after a few days they got bored and they started cleaning up and changing their spaces. And then they went out and started cleaning up and changing their yard. And then when things started mm-hmm. opening back up, people really looked outside and said, I don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. to really the, the rat race mm-hmm. that I was. And we've seen so many people that have changed jobs or changed their lifestyles where they really enjoyed the time they were having with their kids and said, I don't want to go back on the road working. I'm going to find something that maybe pays a little less, but it's here. But it, we have seen in a lot of places that it started with cleaning up your, your art space and then you cleaned up your living room and then you cleaned up your backyard and then you cleaned up your front yard and now they're going down the street. And I think it has led to a lot of people being more aware of what's going on right in their living space and that extends to your Mm -hmm. town your Mm -hmm. county your community i think uh one thing i hear you hear all the time is you know kids these days (laughs) they don't know how to do this they can't even change a tire they'll sit on side of the road and hope their phone's not dead so they can call somebody and i want to ask a lot of those people when was the last time you taught a kid how to change a tire Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be your kid there's opportunities out there that you can uh help those kids out, teach them a life skill that they didn't know. But one other thing I you talk about things that uh, I want to share that I should have said, I uh, probably should have started with this as well. Full disclosure. Uh, a lot of people may think, well, Gage, he does all this stuff cause he gets paid to do it. And there's some truth to that. Uh, I attend a lot of board meetings and all that. I probably wouldn't go to all of them if uh, it wasn't in my job description, but I do in a volunteer position here in the County. I serve on the no water County conservation district. Uh, there's a five member board that, we kind of allocate state and federal dollars to help with conservation here in the county. Uh, I think it's a big responsibility that I take very seriously. And uh, we meet once a month, and it's something that, uh, like I said, I had to volunteer for, and I'm happy to do it. And we're having Conservation Day at the Capitol next week. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to make it down for that particular day. Uh, But we also, since we're a a government entity, if three or more of us meet, it considered a meeting, and I did show up. A couple years ago unannounced and there were three of us there and our uh, district manager she kind of panicked a little bit because we did not notify the public that we would be having a meeting at the department of ag in oklahoma city on that particular day Whoops. so it, you know we follow the rules uh, but like I say anybody can be involved at any level and just that first step is a lot of times just asking those questions of what can you do to help rather than the first question being i don't like this so mm-hmm. that's my my biggest recommendation cool all right well if we don't have anything else i thank you all for joining us today absolutely thank you guys for being here so thanks for having us yep enjoyed it all right um till next time